Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll be doing a review on the Rival Maze Bag. So check it out. Hey guys, Carlo here. Today I'm doing a review on one of my favorite new punching bags, the Rival Maze Bag. You can get this in three different sizes. The smallest being a six by nine, which is six inches in diameter, nine inches in height. They also have a 10 by 15. And the one that I have here, which is the largest, is a 14 by 20. And this retails for 119.95. I'm five foot eight, about 150, 155, walking around, depending on what I ate that day. So you can see how, how large this bag is relative to my size to get a kind of an idea of how big the 14 by 20 is. Now, what size do you decide to get is completely up to you. It just depends on what you're gonna be using this maze bag for. I decided to go with the 14 by 20. I wanted the largest one because I wanted it to be able to handle really everything I throw at it during my training. And I, I mean that both uh, literally and figuratively. Um, this 14 by 20 is perfect because it weighs roughly anywhere between 45 to 55 pounds, depending on what you fill it with and how high you fill it. But it's a perfect size that you can actually get some movement out of the bag to work your, your, your slipping, your bobbing, your weaving, weaving, your head movements, your defensive movements. Uh, but it's also heavy enough and large enough to where it's a good enough size target to where you can land really all of your punches, where there's all of your straight punches, your jabs, your straights, you can obviously land your uppercuts and your hooks, and you can see that it has that pier, uh, you know, teardrop shape. So it has a little bit more bulk at the bottom to where you can really sink your punches in, and it feels really nice. Um, now, there's obviously gonna be variables when it comes to the feel of this bag, depending on what you fill it with, which we'll discuss here in a second. Um, but to me, the 14 by 20 was really the perfect size for myself. If you decide to go with like the 10 by 15 or the six by nine, um, obviously they're gonna work pretty much the same way, good for movement. The six by nine is probably gonna move a little bit quicker because it's a, a lot you know, a lot less mass to move, but it's also gonna be a smaller target. So you can still probably punch it and hit it with shots. You just might not be able to hit it as hard because then the, the bag will start to fly or swing around a lot more because it weighs a lot less. The 10 by 15 is kind of like right in the middle and the 14 by 20 like right here is really perfect for a lot of, of, all, of your, all of your shots, including your power shots. So it takes it very, very well. Uh, the bag itself is manufactured using um, the Rival, what I call the Rival microfiber leather. It's the same material you see, the synthetic material that you see in a lot of the other Rival products. It's manufactured in China. I've had this bag for a couple of months now and it's held up extremely well. I mean, quality wise, the stitching is done very nicely. I haven't had any issues with any of the stitching coming apart any of the logos fading or peeling off. You can see it has Rival written down vertically, as well as their logo. Basically every other panel that they have a logo on there. Uh, there's nothing at the bottom. There's no like hooks or anything to where you can mount something at the bottom, which I think would be kind of pointless for this type of bag. You know, you buy this bag because you want the bag to, to move around. That's kind of one of the best qualities of this bag. You also have the, uh, uh, the tag in here. It says made in China. Uh, what is it? California Proposition 65 warning. Um, you do have the microfiber straps. There's four straps total at the top, and they connect uh, to each at one point with a metal triangular ring that you can use to connect to a carabiner or whatever type of hanging device you have at your house or your gym. And the top enclosure is zippered, and from there you have a, a vinyl bag that you can fill with whatever filler you decide to use put into this and it basically acts as like a container like a barrier so that you don't actually fill the the microfiber shell itself uh, one other nice thing about this bag is that it comes with maybe like a half inch thick of foam padding that has a nice firm consistency to it so when you're landing your punches on this bag you're not just punching right into the filler material you're punching into the foam which is taking a lot of the shot uh, or a lot of the impact should say the force of your punch but it feels very comfortable even if you're using this bag with your bare hands. So whether you're using your bare hands, you're using, you know, rival bag, like a RB5 bag mitts, you're using larger gloves. It's a very forgiving feeling when you're landing your punches uh, on this bag. Now, in terms of filler, I decided to go with dried corn. That's why it's called a maze bag because the old, the old, 
you know, ways back in the day. It's, maize means is my yeast, which in, in Spanish is corn. Uh, and back in the day, you know, decades ago, uh, they would fill these burlap sacks with dried corn, and that's what they would use to hit. That, that would be their punching bag. So, you know, with boxing, a lot of the old school traditional ways have been lost over the years, and a lot of, a lot of times they kind of evolved those ways as well and still use a lot of the old traditions that worked great back then and use them now. And this to me would be a, a good example of that where you have kind of that newer technology of a bag, but you also use the same filler that you would use, you know, 80 years ago. Um, so I decided to go with dried corn. If you do go onto the Rival website, they say that you can use um, dried chickpeas, which is basically garbanzo beans. Um, <clears throat> so I ended up going with dried corn. I bought my bags. Uh, hindsight, I should have went to a local um, like farm feed place. So if you live in an area where they have like a local tractor supply or a farm uh, feed place, you can get like dried corn and other products for relatively cheap per pound. Um, I got mine on Amazon. I'll still put the link in the description box so you can see what I purchased. And I think uh, per um, 10 pound bag, it was like 12 to $13 per 10 pounds. I ended up getting a 50, uh, 50 pounds total. So I got five bags uh, of dried corn. Um, actually, I think I have the corn real quick. I have an extra bag. I didn't use because I filled it up with 40 pounds and it was ready basically um, it was coming over, it was spilling over. So this is what I got. I got the Wagner's cracked corn, and this is literally a 10 pound bag. So I bought, I bought five of these. I have an extra, uh, so I used 40 pounds of it and that filled the bag really nicely. So you can get that, it's really up to you. They, they say you can use uh, dried chickpeas, dried corn. Um, there's also like synthetic, these really small synthetic plastic beads you can use as well. Um, do they do definitely do not recommend sand and i know you guys are gonna ask, well can you put sand in here you could put sand in here but it's basically gonna feel like you're hitting cement because sand is so small and fine that when you fill this up with sand um, you're gonna get more weight because of the density of it but it's gonna pack in so tightly that when you punch it you're not gonna have any give whatsoever it's gonna feel literally like you're gonna be punching a brick wall uh which i definitely don't recommend um so my best recommendation for myself just because I use it is dried corn now the weight also depends on the density of the product so it's not just the I guess you can say the material itself but it, what it's made of just like if you were to fill this with water compared to sand sand is going to be heavier even though the amount you put in is going to be the same in terms of size the sand is heavier just because it has more density to it so complete you know uh, keep that in mind when you're filling this bag anyhow uh, the dried corn is, is amazing in my, uh, my opinion because when you land your punches into this bag, and I'm trying to demonstrate to you guys, you can see that it kind of takes shape of my fist and then it kind of leaves its indentation. So basically that corn on the inside shifts around around my, my, my hand or my fist. So I'm landing this punch and you can see that it just basically forms and shape shifts around my fist and it absorbs your, the shock of the punch very, very well. Uh, it doesn't feel like a traditional heavy bag where when you punch it, it has a little bit of bounce to it and the bag starts to swing. Um, this one definitely absorbs it more and you can hit it with powerful shots and the bag will move a little bit, but it, it stays in place relatively well, even for its size. So it's a little deceiving because you think, okay, it's only 14 by 20 in size. If I start hitting it, it's just gonna start swinging all over the place. Um, and that's definitely not the case with this bag. You can really land some good shots and you can see that it, it takes it really nicely. I mean, you can hit it with uppercuts, you can hit it with hooks. And uh, it just absorbs the shock very well. And because of that foam padding they use, each panel has a piece of foam. It's very comfortable to your hands. It doesn't feel rough. It doesn't scrape up your knuckles. So I definitely love that. Um, so the filling is gonna be the game changer uh, and what really sets the precedence on how, how well this bag performs aside from the quality and this padding. Uh, so the dried corn, any type of material I would recommend that absorbs the shock very well from your punches and doesn't allow the bag to move around too much. Now, in terms of the mobility, you've probably seen other videos I've done on maize bags 
it's the same concept. There's really nothing to this bag other than, you know, it has a good amount of weight to it. So if you don't move your head and you get hit in the face, you're definitely gonna feel it. But you can, you can adjust it and move around and use your head movement very effectively. You can slip, you can step around the bag. You can bob, you can weave underneath it. Get your hand up underneath. It works very nicely in terms of being able to use your defense. You can work on your shoulder roll, getting underneath the bag, carrying shots, uppercuts, combinations, uppercuts, overhands. Oh yeah, overhands are a good one too because you can see the bag. Again, it's shaped like teardrop. So you can work your overhead punches as well. Getting underneath. And then the height all also depends on you. You know, if you're the only one using it, then you're gonna probably mount this bag to your desired height. You know, I kind of put mine, like my nose is pretty much like right here in the middle of the bag. So when it comes swinging towards me and I gotta bend at the knee or bend at the waist and get it underneath the bag, it really forces me to not be lazy and get underneath the bag. You know, if you have the bag too high up, then that's just gonna basically push for kind of like lazy mechanics. And when you get to sparring or a fight, you're gonna be so used to doing it half-assed that it's you're gonna fight half-assed basically. So it's good for me at least. I feel like kind of like right in the middle where your nose is at. I mean, if you really wanna work your legs, your quads and your hands, and you, you can bring this bag even lower, uh, but the only bad thing about that is now punching it, you're gonna be punching lower as well. So to me, that's kind of right, right there is a sweet spot, um, right there in the middle, and that's my best recommendation. But overall, um, I love this bag, man. Um, I find that I kind of gravitate to using this bag more than the others, um, mainly because I'm, it's, it forces me to move around and not stay stationary around, you know, working this bag. And I can still work on power shots and not feel like I can't hit it with, with good power, and I still can. So in terms of the versatility of this bag, it's an amazing bag. And at the price point, uh, $119.95, I think it's a no brainer for the 14 by 20. Uh, the good thing as well is that you're not paying extra for freight shipping because the bag comes unfilled. You have to buy your own filling. Um, so you're not paying extra money for all of that extra weight if this bag came filled, uh, which I like. I mean, you, that gives you the choice to choose the filling that you want. And it's not so huge, it's not like a cylindrical heavy bag where you're gonna be there all day filling it with clothes and all kinds of other crap. So it's nice that you can do this, get yourself you know, 40 to 50 pounds of filler uh, and be good to go. So definitely love this bag. If you guys have any questions or comments, make sure you guys leave them down as usual. I'll put the link in the description box on where you can find this rival maze bag. I'll see you guys later, take care.